Okay, so for chapter six, we're going to be getting into probability. Chapter six and chapter seven go pretty much go together. Uh, that's one reason, dual credit, y'all are going to be tested over six and seven, and we're not going to do like four chapters all at once, and then boom, I'm going to test you. This y'all's next test only covers chapter six and seven, which makes it nice because even then it doesn't cover all of chapter seven. You go to like the last, we only cover the first half of seven on that second test. So this chapter sets the stage for seven, as you can imagine. We're going to build, we're going to start simple and then build. Now, how many of y'all have had geometry? A few of y'all. Okay. So it's mostly those that are in AP stats. Some of y'all that are dual credit have had geometry. What we're going to do today will probably give some give you some geometry flashbacks. Because I know at the end of geometry we talk about basic probability, sample spaces. Stuff like that, that's what we're going to look at today. As soon as my thing will go. Okay, so 6.1, we're going to talk about chance experiments and events. So a chance experiment is any activity or situation where there is uncertainty about two or more possible outcomes. I mean, think of it like flipping a coin. Before you flip that coin, do you know exactly what it's going to land on? No. It could land heads. It could land tails. You don't know. If you didn't know, you have a weighted coin. It is not fair. And you now I may think, well, that's kind of right. That's kind of funny. Why are you saying it's not fair? <laughs> That's, that's actually what it's called. If, if it's weighted, it is not a fair coin. I mean, that probability speaking, a fair coin has a 50-50 chance. If it's weighted, your chances won't be 50-50. Therefore, it's called not fair. So, anyways. So, these are some examples of chance experiments. We roll two six-sided dice, and they both land on sixes. Or a coin is flipped, and it lands on heads. Or we record the color of the next 20 cars to pass an intersection. There's no way. We didn't send someone down two intersections and radio back to us what's coming. We don't know what's coming. We can only see it as they come. Now, a sample space is all of the possible outcomes that could occur. So if you flip a coin, what are your two options that could occur? <laughs> Heads or tails. If you roll a die, just a single die, what could happen? Any number one through six. Now, you do that 20 cars and you name the color of them. As bad as this sounds, it depends on whether you're a guy or you're a girl. On what color you're going to name. Because guys are like, that's blue. The girls are often, actually, that's cyan. It's not blue. That's purple. No, no, that's not purple. That's magenta. Right. No, it's purple. There's purple, there's blue. We only know the eight colors. What is it? Eight colors? No, seven colors of the rainbow. A sample space is all possible outcomes for the experiment. So an experiment is to be performed to us do this first example to kind of set the stage for sample space. So we're going to do an experiment. I tortured third period with this example because it was right before lunch. But anyways, hopefully y'all like lunch and y'all won't be tortured. 
We're going to do an experiment to study student preferences in the food line in the cafeteria. Specifically, the staff wants to analyze the effect of the student's gender on their preferred food line. So are they going to choose burger, salad, or main entree? And then we're going to look at are they male or female? So when we do the sample space, there's going to be six possible outcomes. And when we try to name them, let's be organized about it. Don't just start naming random things. Think it through. So first, I'll kind of start it off. We have a male that chooses the burger line. Okay, fair enough. What do y'all think the second one would be then? If the male choose, the first one's male choosing burger line. What do y'all think option two is going to be? Female choosing the burger. Because we do male and female burger, then we can do male and female salad, then male and female main entree. So we kind of just filled in those blanks. The third one, we'll say the male chooses the salad line. Then the female chooses the salad line. The male chooses the main entree. And female chooses the main entree. Now, this is all six options. This is our whole sample space. However, that's a lot to write. I catch y'all some slack because I wrote the first two thirds of the sen each sentence for you. You just had to fill in, fill in the last two or three words. But let's shorten it to where we don't have to write as much. We could do the whole sample space in a much shorter fashion. So we could use a set. I just showed the answer, but let's actually think through it. So as the sample space could equal, let's make an ordered pair out of each of them. For instance, a male choosing the burger line. I'm not going to say burger line. I'm just going to say male and burger. Male comma burger. I'm going to use an ordered pair. What would my next option be? Female and burger. We're just going down our list. So then what's the next one? Male salad. Male salad. And then female salad. And then male. Would y'all be okay if instead of me saying main entree, I just said entree? Okay. Now entree. And then female entrees. And since this is a set, a sample space is the set of all possible outcomes, we need to include this in brackets. I can find out where my pen went. There it is. So let's close the bracket. Now, even then, that's shorter than writing six sentences, but it's still a good bit amount, to, good bit of stuff to write. 
So what if we said M stands for male, F stands for female, B stands for burger, S for salad, and E for main entree? If we said that, we could simplify this even further. Instead of saying Mel Burger, we could just say MB. We don't have to put a comma. We don't have to put parentheses. It's MB, Mel Burger. What can we put for the next one? FB, female burger. And then MS, FS, yep. ME, FE. Good. So that's a much more condensed version of the sample space. That's usually what people will use because if you're doing a study, think of your think of it like you're doing this study. And you the bell rings and y'all are all going in, everyone's going in to let's say D lunch. Are you going to have time to sit there as you're watching each person and write male, salad, female, burger, male, entree? You're not going to have enough time to write that. If you're trying to get as many as you can, you want to write shorthand, MS, FB. You want to write quick. Let's, or you go to, a, how many of y'all have worked, not in a fast food place, but like in a sit-down restaurant? Anyone worked in a sit-down restaurant? You have, y'all probably, if someone orders an entree, y'all don't write the whole name of the entree out, do you? Y'all probably have some sort of abbreviation that you write down, and then everyone knows on y'all side of the world, if you will, they know what that means. The cooks know, y'all know. Yeah. So... Sample space, we tend to abbreviate. We don't want to write out the whole thing. Ain't nobody got time for that. Now, another way you could do sample space is by using a tree diagram. So what was the first thing we observed when someone came into the cafeteria? What did we write down first? Male or female. So that would be the first two branches of our tree. Are they male or are they female? And then what did we write down? What they ate. So each person gets three options. They can get a burger. They can get a salad. Or they can get a main entree. Regardless of whether you're male or female, everyone gets the same three options. Burger, salad, main entree. Okay, now let's say we had this outcome. What would that outcome mean? What's that outcome mean? What's that? That's right. So this outcome is a male that chose a salad. You follow the tree. You start at the beginning and you follow the tree. So this is a 
the outcome now salad. What about this outcome? What happens here? A female chose a burger. That's right. So we read down the trees, down the branches. Questions? Okay, so let's see, the tree has two sets. Yeah, we got that. The branches corresponding to the two bits of information gathered. We got it. And to identify the particular outcome, you go through the tree. Okay, yeah, so that paragraph is just summarizing what we just did. Okay, let's go to the next page. So let's suppose a six-sided die is rolled. The possible outcomes are that the die can land with one dot up, or we can have two, three, four, five, or six dots up. So how can I write that sample space? If I wanted to do the abbreviated version, what could I write in the brackets here? What are my options? If I roll a die, see, I'll set it earlier. What options do I have? One, three, six, right? Now, when you write a sample space, you need to write all the options. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. That's our full sample space. The S here stands for sample space. And I mentioned this already, but we have to use set notation to list the outcomes because a sam the sample space is the set of all possible outcomes. That's how we use the brackets. That's called set notation. Now, let's say I came to you. I didn't know any better. Uh, I didn't. I haven't had statistics before. I came to you and said, "Hey, I'm going to roll this die. I have a fair die here. I'm going to roll it. What's the chance I roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six? What would y'all tell me? Hundred percent, right? Because I just named all the options. You're going to look at me and say, "Dude, you just named everything. You're." 100%. You're going to roll one of them. Yeah. That's because the sum of the probabilities in the, of all outcomes in the sample space equals 1. As a percent, we'd say 100%. But with probabilities, you typically use decimals. So the sum of the probabilities of the outcomes of a sample space equals 1. And the word 1 is a blank. Okay, so let's suppose two coins are flipped. What would our sample space be? What could we get? I'm going to flip two quarters. What could happen? Heads, heads or tails for each of them, right? 
So what would one possible outcome be? Heads, heads. I'll drive it down. Okay, so I get heads, heads. What could be another outcome? Heads, tails. Okay. Tails, tails. And we've got one more. Okay. Tails, heads. That's right. That's our sample space. We could also, if we didn't want to list it out, if, let's say we're more of a visual person, we can make a tree out of it. So for my first flip, what options do I have? Heads or tails. And I flip it again. And again, I have the options of heads and tails. In either case, heads and tails. Now, what would this one be? Let's say I landed there. What would that represent from our sample space up here? Mm -hmm. Tails. We go down to tails and then up to heads. That's right. So this would be tails, heads. Questions? Okay. Let's see. That. An event is any collection of outcomes from a sample space of a chance experiment. A simple event is an event consisting of exactly one outcome. So we've got events and simple events. Event, an event is just any collection of outcomes. A simple event is one single outcome. So let's think back to our lunch line example. If I wanted the event, that the student selected is a male. Which one of our options deals with that? Male burger? Male salad? Male entree? That would be the event that the student selected is male. So on your notes, it has the word male. You can also, instead of saying male, you could just say capital M equals, and then in the brackets, list your male events. Your male outcomes, I should say. What if I did the event that the preferred food line is the burger line? Male burger, female burger. And then the last little one on this example. The event that the person selected is a female that prefers the salad line. What would that one be? So female that prefers salad. Well, we only have one option for that. FS. And that's an example of a simple event because only one outcome was picked. Okay, 
question from that. Let's suppose a six-sided die is rolled. The outcome that the die would land on an even number would be what? Well, we're not wanting the probabilities. We're wanting the actual outcomes. What would we have to land on for it to be an even number? Two, four, and six. Again, we're not wanting probabilities. We're wanting the actual event that it happened. Two, four, and six. That's our event. So again, this is an example of an event. Okay. Let's, and when we do events, we typically use capital letters to denote, hey, this is an event. Okay, now one way to represent these events are through Venn diagrams. So when I was in college, I drew a ton of these in my probability class. So yes, I took a whole class just on probability. The collection of all possible outcomes is represented as a rectangle. So this rectangle represents our sample space. That represents our sample space. The circle with the A in it is event A. That represents event A. And which that's what I said right there. The rectangle represents the sample space. The shaded area, which is that circle, represents the event A. Sample space is a blank, and then you may want to draw that rectangle. And then I want to introduce, I know we're getting close to time. We, I want to do one more slide to introduce the topic of complement. And then we'll call it quits. So if A and B are two events, the event not A consists of all experimental outcomes that are not in event A. Not A is sometimes called the complement of A. Actually, you can say not A is always, pretty much always called the complement of A. You won't hear me say not A. You're going to hear me say A complement. And we denote that by A with a superscript C or A with an apostrophe. So in this picture here, the shaded area is a complement, or not A. So it's everything that's outside the circle. So we'll stop there.